we'll be talking about upgrade of 10G CRS to 11G grid infrastructure and this scenario restricts us to do the entire upgrade without ASM so in my current 10G setup I do not have any ASM uh, I don't plan to implement it any time after the upgrade to 11G however at any given point in time later if you feel you need to migrate from non ASM to ASM that's quite doable so for the for the discussion sake here I have eliminated the ASM component out of my installation so there is no ASM in the current setup so to get started off with and just to show you what exactly is there in place I would be validating the current setup and wherever required I would also be taking the required nodes the first thing to determine is how many nodes are there in my current installation so here are my rather here is my two node cluster So I would validate one of them uh, one at a time so this is where my cluster runs from the cluster oracle home is this the version of the cluster I am using needs to be determined and it is reportedly 10.205 it's the same version marked in my OCR as well the number of nodes There are two nodes, rack 1 and rack 2 with their virtual IP address, private IP addresses respectively as this and this with their virtual IP addresses as the name of my cluster is prod CRS I'm going to make a note of all these commands for you to f refer anytime in future the name of my cluster as I said is prod CRS so I am planning to upgrade this setup from 10.205.0 terminal release to 11G release to 11.203.0 so number of nodes have been determined CRS software version has been determined better if I put those commands here itself the CRS software version the IP addresses that are currently in use OIFC FG GetIF which will show me uh, which interfaces are being used for what purpose ETH0 in my case is a public interface with a net mask of 172.168.0.0 eth1 192.168.200.0 is my cluster interconnect there are other methods to determine this as well you could have logged into your database
and queried it from x dollar ksx pia this shows you the same information albeit in a different format you could have obtained information purely for your interconnects by saying v dollar cluster underscore interconnects it purely shows you information for the interconnect in all the cases notice one thing that wherever the uh, whether i query it from ksx pia or whether i query it from v dollar cluster interconnects the source of information is oracle cluster registry the ocr so here who says that eth1 is private ocr who says eth0 is public it it's uh, embedded into the ocr configuration that's what we get to see from oif cfg get if what i don't know as of now is where is my ocr here is my ocr there is other way to validate it to say ocr check ocr check reportedly tells me the location of the ocrs here i can see from this file which is the ocr pointer file etc oracle ocr.loc in case of a linux platform this is my ocr copy this is the mirror of ocr so whosoever has done this tng installation might have placed those files there the location of my voting disk along with the count of voting disk can be obtained using crs ctl query css vote disk in my case those voting disks are numbered 3 in quantity remember voting disks are uh, required to be in odd configuration odd numbers so i have three voting disks which is uh, definitely an odd number i need to know what all databases are configured what status what version so on and so forth i'm saying crs stat hyphen t it shows there's only one database as of now there's another way to do this and with hyphen a it prints all the other attributes as well srv ctl config database hyphen d db name hyphen a i could see where's the oracle home what's the sp file in use uh, so on and so forth another way to quickly determine is to query the instance statuses instance id instance name host name status version from gv dollar instance so i know what all databases are running what is the details of my database named prod what is the instance status version host name on which they are running so on and so forth another way to determine is to query the instance status by saying or checking the complete database status for that matter both the instances are up and running quickly finish the crs health check all the 
background demons including CRS, CSS and EVMD are reportedly healthy. Now there is a decision to be made about what I am going to have in my upgraded environment. So you may have to take a call. Currently my setup does not has ASM. You may or may not want to implement ASM after 11G. If you want to implement ASM, you may do it now or later. If you are voting this and OCR files are on a raw device or NFS CFS and if you are planning to implement ASM now or later, you may want to migrate the OCR and voting disk to ASM. You may. Anyways, anything other than RAW is certified for voting disk and for CRS. However, since if you are doing, uh, since you are planning to do an upgrade, uh, and my assumption is if your OCR and voting disk are on to RAW, you can still upgrade it to 11G CRS. But the first thing that you must do at a later stage is to migrate your voting disk and OCR from RAW devices to any of the certified locations. There are two certified locations, ASM, CFS, NFS. So either a shared file system based mounting. Uh, using a cluster file system or a network mounted file system or to ASM. Anyway, CFS NFS is certified. So in my case, I am not going to move them anywhere. I am not planning to go to ASM immediately. If at all there is a need, I would do it at a later stage. As of now, I am going to do a plain upgrade. Next thing is, would you be running mixed mode configuration or would you be doing an entire upgrade in one go? You can upgrade only 10G CRS to 11G grid infrastructure, leaving the current database to whatever version it is now, that is 10.2.0.5.0, 10G R2, and plan to do the DB upgrade at a later stage. If you however do this, then the configuration would be called as a mixed mode configuration which will stay for some time, where grid version, grid infrastructure version is 11G R2 and database is 10G R2. To support a mixed mode configuration for whatsoever period you are planning, you must pin the cluster nodes, by default the cluster nodes would be in a unpinned status. By default, the nodes would be in unpinned status. So if you plan to run a mixed mode configuration, after doing an upgrade of those nodes to 11G release to grid infrastructure, convert those unpinned nodes to a pinned status. Only then you will be able to run the mixed mode configuration. 
configuration changes that you may have to do from the DNS standpoint TNG CRS does not require DNS configuration but 11G R2 mandatorily requires DNS for scan and for GNS if at all you are using GNS we are not planning to use GNS but at least for scan you must have a DNS if you are implementing GNS feature of 11G R2 then DNS is mandatory even if you are not implementing GNS since there is a mandatory implementation of scan whether or not you use it later it's a different story but scan needs to be there prior to configuration there is no way that you can bypass the scan configuration after configuring 11g release 2 whether or not to connect to your database using scan is your prerogative you may connect using public ips 9i style you may connect to your database using VIP based listener 10G style you may connect to your database using scan listeners 11G style but whether or not you plan to use scan in future you still have to make a provision for scan using DNS prior to the installation so ensure uh, so make a point that 11G mandatorily requires DNS for scan and for GNS you may or may not use scan after the installation my assumption is when I say you may or may not use scan my assumption is you still want to use the 10G method of connecting through VIP listeners it's not recommended I told you there's a definite advantage of using scan number one scans are multiple they are they float between the nodes so for HA purpose and to provide client side configuration and immunity from server side changes it's always desired to use scan so it's up to you whether or not you would like to use a scan but there is a definite requirement prior to cluster installation that a scan IP must be DNS published with three IP addresses minimum to be resolved using round robin method via the DNS names resolution cluster we have already validated so it all looks good to me now I am going to run through cluster verification utility I am planning to install 11.2030 so I already uploaded the software onto the cluster nodes which currently are 10G I am going to run through cluster verification checks I am switching in as Oracle going to the stage location grid 11g grid is where I have uploaded the software I am going to run through the cluster verification So I am running cluster verification utility stage as pre CRS INST. The nodes are SL rack 1, SL rack 2, hyphen R 11G release 2, verbose, so that I could see what all checks are, uh, what all checks pass and what all checks fail. For the first time you might have seen pre-check for cluster services setup was all successful. So this time I ensured it doesn't complain about NFS, uh, sorry NTP uh, or for that matter the, the DNS resolution time 1500, 15,000 milliseconds so on and so forth. 
so I categorically marked uh, certain changes although I deviated from the standards to uh, this would stop the DNS resolution for an unreachable node to fail if my unreachable node cannot be contacted within 1500 milliseconds so deliberately I have increased the timeout from value 1 to 3 so ensuring th that passes I categorically started NTP daemon on my machine using the sleeving option so I ensured none of those checks fail so I categorically started NTP I told you NTP is optional but I wanted to see it all clear so I deliberately kept my etcresolve.conf quite simple with a higher value for a timeout and I ensured that the NTP passes clear in my case I am using all NFS mount points so there is a storage from where I have mounted OCR123, vote123 and the ORA data mount point this is how my 10G clusterware is running so I ran through the cluster verification which has passed this time with flying colors no failures next is install 11G grid infrastructure software I can directly begin the installation now as an oracle user from any one of the two nodes I would select the first node where I anyways ran the cluster verification starting VNC and going through the run installer to install the 11G grid infrastructure software I don't want any updates so I am skipping the updates it's intelligent enough to see what exactly I am planning to do in the earlier attempt when it was a fresh installation it has highlighted you this option here it is quite clever to pick up that I must be planning to do an upgrade so it says is this what you are planning to do exactly this is what I am planning to do now language it has al already detected that I am running a two node cluster where the grid infrastructure home is not grid infrastructure the CRS home 10G is U002 APP Oracle product 10G CRS I need not validate SSH connectivity because 10G cluster where is already there so I must have done it at the time of 10G installation still to test it says all pass going to the next screen it has automatically detected the name of my cluster is this clear I do not want however because my scan IP is not in line with this one my scan IP is configured with the name group 00 hyphen scan which is quite possible that my cluster name and my scan name may not match the scan listener port if scans are started scan VIPs are attached to a node on which port the scan listener should start 1521 it says validating the scan information all passed it says tell me who should be able to log in as OSDBA for ASM and operator and what not for everyone I, I want O install it says are you sure now it says tell me where is your oracle base
it says tell me where you want to install the grid infrastructure so i am installing it under u002 app grid most of the checks for the first time should pass here otherwise we always ignored a couple of checks which used to fail here so it would do multicast test kernel version packages free space in tmp free space under the mount point uh, ntp checks whether oracle user is there he is primarily a member of o install group kernel parameters os limits everything it will check uh, i expect it to pass uh, without any complaints this time fantastic no more failures reported directly it has come to the installation screen i said install now while it's doing the installation there is no point waiting for this screen again to go from here to here i am keeping a small pause on this video the the installation has just finished now it's prompting me to run from the new 11g grid home root upgrade dot sh now there are two things uh, i take a chance run root upgrade dot sh due to bugs it may fail second alternative is before i run root upgrade dot sh i apply the latest psu patch bundle to this grid infrastructure home and once that patch has been successfully installed then run root upgrade dot sh looking at the stability of our cluster i mean we had two times reboot in between while doing the installation uh, it's a dilemma whether to wait any longer and apply the patch taking our chances or run root upgrade.sh and see you may just be lucky i mean we still have one lucky in our class so we may be lucky uh, and it may still go through another way is get the patch applied i will tell you what needs to be done here is the latest grid infrastructure psu patch available here is the latest o patch available let's do one thing we'll run root upgrade dot sh if everything fails next time we'll apply the patch and get ahead i want to quickly finish it up no the o patch is just o patch you don't have to do anything just o patch apply nothing else i'm taking my chances instead of waiting for that o patch application i'm just running it so i am running root remember this time you are running root upgrade dot sh so i am running root upgrade dot sh it will bring down everything from the 10g crs side will clean up the etc init tab entries for 10g startup it will add 11g daemon into init tab it will uh, change the file permissions it will update the OCR and voting disk information for scan related information and VIP. Once that is done, it will finish on node one. When you run the same root upgrade script on the second node, it will also deconfigure 10G CRS entries from etc init tab. It will remove the script from etc init dot d. Instead, it will add the OHSD daemons entry into etc init tab. It will copy the scripts. It will update the VIP scan IP information of all the nodes. into the ocr and voting disk 
once it is done it will start up the daemons this time they would all start as 11g daemons as of now let's wait uh, i am opening another session to see what exactly is happening in the background see here can you quickly make out that certain processes are still running from grid home the newly installed grid home certain processes are still running from old or uh, old grid home if you want to see what exactly it's trying to do in the background you could move to u002 app grid cfg tools crs config and you can do a tell hyphen f of this one old crs stack stopped successfully is what it has reached to now it's executing crs ctl check crsd cssd evmd after waiting for some time because those processes once you say shut down take some time to go down and once it is down then now it is starting the actual upgrade process in the meanwhile i am on the other node see here the other node is still running from 10g crs instance is still up and running now it's replacing clusterware entries in init tab that's what i said 10g cluster where adds three entries for crsd cssd evmd it will remove them instead it will add only one entry for ohsd you can see those entries from the other node which is yet to be upgraded evmd cssd crsd it will remove all of them instead it will add only one entry for ohsd so it says replacing clusterware entries now it is starting those daemons initializing them it's starting the resources as well one at a time now see what it's it's running through ocr config upgrade ocr keys are successfully populated now it's checking the status of the cluster only on the current node sl rack 1 
configure oracle grid infrastructure for the cluster node is successful now i am going to run through the same command on the other node while it's being done on the second node i am checking how are things looking on to 11g see here the entire old home was replaced all the demons are now started from the new home so we'll wait for those services to come up gracefully on the second node it would also take some time until then i am putting a small pause on this video so on the second node it has uh, brought down all the 10g services 10g grid clusterware services and now it is replacing the clusterware entries into etc init tab while it is doing that i want to check understand now software currently is 112030 but the version that is currently written in ocr is still 102050 but at the end of this entire upgrade once root upgrade.sh finishes on the second node both should return 112030 so you can clearly see software is of 112030 but ocr is of the version 112050 sorry 102050 start upgrade invoked a biggest difference and a good product enhancement between 10g and 11g is when you used to install 10g uh, there is no way one could run or rather rerun root upgrade uh, root dot sh after the failure run so i ran it once it failed now there is no way you can rerun it you could still rerun it using all tribal methods undocumented methods there is a clear cut supported method to rerun root.sh starting from 11g so that is one major product advantage upgrading it to 11g oracle clusterware operating version was successfully set to i don't believe this clear so now the version in the ocr has also been updated to 112030 just to reiterate what we learned in one of those version compatibility discussions database version has to be less than or equal to the version of your cluster where finally it says it was successful so without a patch this time it has all gone through now once i am done with root upgrade i am returning to my oui i said okay it will do post cluster verification checks and if it all uh, goes well that's it we have successfully upgraded the cluster where on a live machine remember there was no downtime required people were able to access the other node always so we we managed to do the upgrade of clusterware database is still of 102050 version 
once it has been upgraded let's quickly check how it is looking now I am still 10 GDBA version new command old version is new command is old for backward compatibility the command still runs however you should run the appropriate command this is the new version command as of now it's all looking good let's quickly validate VIP of rack 1 is on rack 1 VIP of rack 2 is on rack 2 the 10 G listeners VIP VIP listeners are still registered the prod database is online although the instances are mentioned at the top in a 10 G style is it the style where 11 G says no 11 G says ora dot d prod dot db and immediately next to it it shows the output so although I am using the new version command the output is still in a 10 G CRS underscore stat like format because my database still is 10 G database scan VIP one is on rack 2 another is on rack 1 another is on rack 1 so are the scan VIP based listeners clear no ASM this time so ASM is shown as offline offline there is no ASM in my configuration rest all other things are just normal it's doing the enterprise manage, uh, manager configuration OEM DB console and at the end of this it would do the cluster post verification Now while this is happening, new version old command, it says what is this, remember the same command has worked in 10G, this is no longer supported now, hyphen P clear so the OLS nodes executable itself has updated to the latest version I want to know the name of my clusters no change in the name of the cluster cluster name is still prod CRS The upgrade of grid infrastructure for cluster was successful. I want to check using CRS CTL the various other attributes. No change except for the format remember the other way there was no UUID or UID for a file ID files universal ID in 10G now each file has a universal ID voting disk in this case it's a file which is sitting on top of a, your NFS My database is running at the end. So it's a 102050 database running on a 11G cluster. I'm opening our yesterday's discussion about server pools.
द सर्वर पूल फ्री एंड जेनेरिक विथ टू नोड कॉन्फिग्रेशन description of a free pool the sir the server status to which pool they belong to generic pool by default I will check the status of the nodes. somewhere during yesterday's discussion we had that uh, thing in mind uh, about pin and the unpin status i'm just trying to locate that command i forgot the one which shows you the status of the node pinned or unpinned hyphen t see here the nodes are in a pinned state if they would have been in an unpinned state there is no way you could bring up in it in a mix mode so uh, currently we are running it in a mix mode so ls nodes hyphen and hyphen t shows you that both the nodes are pinned and that's why your 10g database is running on a 11g grid is this clear so we have successfully upgraded that cluster where to the latest version now to upgrade the database you could run dbua to upgrade the database to the latest version so let's let me launch dbua i may not finish the entire exercise because it may take a long time because of slow io in our environment but just to, to just to take you there The first thing is to install 11G database software and from the new Oracle home you will have to launch DBUA as of now I do not have the software so I'm not going to run you through The DB upgrade is no different than any other upgrade so launch DBUA from the newly installed 11G release to uh, RDBMS home and just run through it will do the db upgrade for you uh, finding out what's appropriate for you it will prompt you for doing a time zone upgrade which you can select there and then only it will automatically bring up that environment as a uh, two node environment i want to quickly run through the config uh, command to find out the details of my database
see what it says remember which SRV CTL I am using here see what it says when I run it against this one it says database prod is of the version 10.2 which cannot be administered using this version of SRV CTL. You must use the SRV CTL which is available in the database home. I am logging in, setting the environment. Clear? So you must use the SRV CTL provided to you by the 10G home to configure the mixed mode configuration. Otherwise, any SRV CTL, if the database and the cluster where would have been same, then any SRV CTL, whether it's from grid home bin or whether it's from RDBMS home bin, any one would, could be used. Clear? So, I will put a stop on this video where we have seen how to upgrade from 10G CRS to 11G grid infrastructure. We did it without ASM. One important thing we had to do in between because of two times our node got evicted on a 10G cluster where during the upgrade we changed the tolerance for disk timeout, diag wait, miscount and reboot time to 300, 13, 90 and 6 respectively which is way apart from the default values. You must not set these parameters on your own until you consult the Oracle support. Ideally, after running the grid infrastructure installation and upgrading it, it has prompted you to run root upgrade.sh. You may not run this immediately. You may or may not run this immediately. You might want to apply the latest PSU before running the root upgrade. I have, we have taken the chances and fairly we have traded on the brighter side without we facing any issue. After which you would be doing 11G release to RDBMS software installation. Immediately after the software is installed to the same home you will apply the latest RDBMS PSU. We have already applied it in our 11G practical. After that do the sanity checks and lastly the DBUA to upgrade the actual database. While doing so, you can optionally perform the time zone upgrade as well. The DBUA itself will provide you uh, a check box where it says do you want to perform the time zone upgrade as well. It's recommended to be on the latest time zone. So thank you for joining in.